Today we're going to learn about gas stoichiometry. So what we're going to do is take this wonderful equation, PV equals NRT, and we're going to do it, use that equation to do some great gas stoichiometry. Let's, let's start. So first of all, I want to make something perfectly clear. It's that I love Amadeo Avogadro. Without Amadeo Avogadro, this, what we're doing today, would not, would not be possible. Uh, if you forgot who he was, Amadeo Avogadro came up with this idea. And uh, he said, equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure have the same number of molecules. And as a consequence, we have this formula, which is V1 over N1, V1 being volume, N1 being number of moles. So as you increase the number of moles, you increase or decrease the volume. And you can see here's Amadeo Avogadro with gas particles flying around it. All right, what does this mean to our, our questions and what we're doing? Well, first of all, if you have equal volumes of any gas, they have the same number of particles, regardless of how heavy they are. Let's take one very light gas. We have here helium. And then we have the exact same volume of chlorine. Notice that chlorine, the balloon, is on the ground because it is so heavy that it is not, it's actually heavier than air, so it does not float. Helium, on the other hand, has to be taped there. So even though they have different densities, they have this, and the atoms in those balloons weigh different, the mole, there's the same number of molecules in each one because they have the same volume, and they're at the same temperature and the same pressure. So we're going to use that idea to help us do some problems today. We're going to do two problems specifically. So let's get going. So oh, here I've put down the molar mass of helium, which is only four. Molar mass of chlorine, which is 70.9, super heavy chlorine. Now chlorine also is a colored glass, so it's poisonous. So if you see chlorine coming your way, run the other way. All right, so we see here, however, the number of molecules, the, what we could do is we could say the N, which N represents uh, Avogadro's number, or number of moles, I'm sorry, N is N of helium, is equal to the N of chlorine, Cl2. All right, now we're ready. Let's go. So gas stoichiometry. Here we say if we have volumes, we could say we have two volumes of hydrogen plus one volume of oxygen. Notice hydrogen is diatomic, oxygen is diatomic. Produces two volumes of water. Now this is not water as a liquid, it's water as a vapor. We did that in the lab. So, but the balance of equation for this would be H2 plus O2 gives you two H2O. So all these are gases, so guess what? We can do gas stoichiometry, what you've all been waiting to do. Now from this, we see some important ratios. The ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one. We get that from the mole ratio from the balanced equation. We see the mole ratio of hydrogen to water is two to two, or one to one. And from oxygen to water is one to two, and that's pretty much it. Those are our mole, mole ratios from the balanced equation. So let's use those to answer a question. Here we go. How much hydrogen gas would be required by three liters of oxygen to react completely. Now, I just, again, showed you the balanced equation up here in the top. Now, for this, really, the only thing we're doing is we're doing that step three. If you remember, we did uh, the four steps of, of gram to gram problems. We went from moles of one substance to moles of another. We can really do the same thing, thing with volumes because our friend Amadeo Avogadro told us, told us that volumes can be equated the same as moles. So here's how you do the problem. You would say, Three liters of O2. Now, instead of doing a mole ratio, boom, what I've done is done a volume ratio. So here, what I've done is I, I've looked at the balanced equation, and it told me that there's two to one ratio of oxygen to hydrogen. So what I did here is I put a two to one ratio in this factor label that you see right here. So the, the factor label that is two to one came from this balanced equation up here of those reactants. And so what happens, liters of oxygen cancels out, bye-bye, and you end up with liters of hydrogen. So two times three is, you got to guess, boom, six liters of hydrogen gas. That's how much is produced. That's how easy this is. You just got one mole ratio, but we're going to call it a liter or a volume ratio. But guess what? To, for, to use this equation or this method here, everything in the reaction, or whatever you're talking about in the reaction, it must be a gas. It must be a gas. You got it. So let's do another problem here. 
So the next problem, and first of all, we want to write a reaction. Now, this is another actually famous reaction. And this reaction, uh, the person who developed it was uh, Fritz Haber. He came up with the Haber process to produce ammonia. So what it, what it is is we have one volume of nitrogen gas reacts with three volumes of hydrogen gas to give us two volumes of ammonia. So if you want to write the balance reaction, go ahead and do that. You can hit pause. And here it is. The balance reaction is nitrogen plus hydrogen gives us ammonia. Now notice here I have the balance, uh, a balance the reaction, and expresses a volume ratio, which is actually also the mole ratio from the reaction. So I'm going to give you two questions about this reaction. And here's the first question. Now the first question is if I have five liters, oh, let's go ahead and see that reaction because we like to see that reaction as we're doing the problems. Have five liters of nitrogen and five liters of hydrogen gas that react. Now we see that's not the perfect mole ratio. The perfect mole ratio appears is one to three, but what we've got is a five to five ratio. So if I've got five liters of nitrogen, five liters of hydrogen, what volume of ammonia, remember ammonia is NH3, would be produced in this reaction? So what you have to do is you have to change liters of nitrogen to liters of ammonia, liters of hydrogen to liters of ammonia, then guess what we're going to do? So let's do that. So first let's change liters of nitrogen to liters of ammonia using the two, there's a two to one ratio right here from this balance equation because there's an understood one in front of that nitrogen. Liters of nitrogen cancel and then we multiply two times five and we get, you guessed it, ten liters of ammonia. And then we also have to do the other reactant as well. Let's do that. So we start with five liters of hydrogen and multiply that by the ratio of hydrogen to ammonia. Now the ratio of hydrogen to ammonia, the more, more ratio is actually two to three in the balanced equation. And we do this, the liters of hydrogen cancel out. And so what we do is we say five times two, which is 10, divided by three, and that gives us 3.3 liters of ammonia. Now my question to you is, let's see how much you remember from this, how much ammonia is produced? Is it 10 liters? Is it 3.3 liters? Is it 13.3 liters? Is it 6.7 liters? Which one of those is it? Hopefully you picked the smaller amount. The amount produced is 3.3 liters. So that's the amount of product. So for this, we actually have something called a limiting reactant. It's weird as, as we've mentioned this before, limiting reactant. So limiting reactant this time, guess it. Hopefully you said hydrogen. And the excess reactant would be the other reactant, which is nitrogen. So there's a limiting and excess reactant from this. So the limiting reactant, again, is hydrogen. The excess reactant is a nitrogen because we, didn't, we did not produce that much. So the hydrogen is our limiting reactant. One more question from this, and that will finish this up. And the question, uh, let's, let's see that reaction again. There we go. There's that reaction. If we have five liters of nitrogen and five liters of hydrogen gas, same, same initial part, how much of the excess reactant is left at the end of the reaction? Now to do this, what you need to do is, is to start with your limiting reactant. Remember our limiting reactant was hydrogen, and this time go to our other reactant. And we use a mole ratio this time that's of the two reactants. We see there's a three, there's a three to one, there's an understood one there, ratio of hydrogen to nitrogen. Now what happens is liters of hydrogen cancels out. And so basically you say five divided by three, and that would give you 1.7 liters of ammonia. So that's a perfect ratio. If you had five liters of hydrogen, a perfect ratio of ammonia would be 1.7 liters of nitrogen, or ammonia, to go with that. I'm sorry, this is a typo here. This, this says ammonia, this should, be, this should be just N2, sorry. So that, meant, that would mean that there's 1.7 liters of N2 nitrogen gas that is used in this reaction. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, we said we had five liters of nitrogen initially. And then we just determined from this that we used 1.7 liters of nitrogen. That's how much was used. So what we want to do is subtract that from the initial amount. So we say five minus 1.7 liters of nitrogen used, and then bam, we've got three liters of nitrogen left. That's it. So what I'd like you to do now is repeat this three times. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. Now you're going to have an awesome day.